Hi there, I'm Teresa Segman, founder of Seem Sensational and creator of the Sew Like a Pro Training School. Thanks for watching. In today's video, I share with you some of the strategies that allow me to create superbly fitting dresses no matter the size or shape of the woman. However, if you haven't watched the first video in this three-part series, please go back and watch it. You'll find the link above. In that first video, I shared with you my top 10 tips for neckline success, showing you how to choose shapes that suit your body shape and size so you always look and feel your best, both in costumes and street clothes. Also, you don't want to miss the PDF in which I give you all the neckline tips as well as the details on a special homework assignment to do a photo session on yourself, just like I do in the video. You're not going to believe how well it works in helping you know without a doubt which necklines look good on you and which ones don't. Now, making a dress look fantastic on you begins with proper design, not just proper fittings, which we'll do in a few minutes. So go on. If you haven't watched the first video, please do so before continuing on here. Today, I share with you my top 10 tips for fitting success, plus you get to watch as I do a personal fitting with one of my favorite clients. Really, this is the first fitting in what was intended to be the complete basic Latin and skate sewing program. Thanks to some nasty technical issues that erased, much of the videos are audio. It's no longer a program for purchase, but free training for you. Do you feel overwhelmed or worried about making your own skate or dance costume from scratch? Are you one of those folks who've never gotten past the thinking about it stage and you spend forever and a day looking for that perfect used or off the rack dress? Perhaps you make dresses as a significant source of income and the process is so maddening that you're willing to give it up and go get a day job. Or have you made a few dresses and the fit is just horrible and you don't want to try it again? Trust me, after 23 years of making costumes, I've been through it all. <laughs> I got beyond it, so can you. Whatever your story, don't give up on creating a beautiful, well-crafted competition or show dress. If I can do it at age 18 with no costume experience and no internet to help me, so can you. I've suffered through it all. <laughs> literally, and created the Sew Like a Pro training series so none of you would have to fight with fabrics and fittings as much as I did. Maybe you're wondering how I even got into dressmaking. Well, I danced from the age of five, first ballet, then I added jazz and modern in high school. My mom taught me how to sew as a child. I made clothing for my stalls and stuffed animals, of course. While in college for architecture and visual design, I missed dance. So I called up the local ballroom franchise and inquired about lessons. Well, being a college student, private lessons were not in the budget. <laughs> but for some reason, I asked if they needed a teacher, and they did. Within a few months of doing waltz with turned out feet, <laughs> I had my first professional competition on the calendar. Talk about panicking. I had to make a dress because I didn't even know professional costumes existed. I had no concept of what would look good on me or what was in fashion at the time, but I had a large dose of ingenuity and a little skill to get me through. My first dress was a true one-of-a-kind original, white with big black leather dots I glued on. In hindsight, it was only suitable if I wanted to date a Dalmatian. <laughs> And my poor dance partner, I even made him a matching shirt. The next costume, which I wore at my very first major event, the first one I had ever been to, let alone competed in, was almost as bad, though spot-free. <laughs> Boy, did I need someone giving me guidance on what to wear and how to make it. I needed so like a pro. <laughs> this is one of the key reasons I created the sewing school to help dancers and skaters like you avoid the struggles and dressmaking disasters that I had. What my early struggles mean for you is that I'm not just a seamstress with no real world experience. I competed professionally in the ballroom circuit for many years. I know a dancer's costume needs. I know from following skating for decades and my own limited ice skating experience that dance and skate dresses require the same construction principle. 
And I also know that when you wear a dress that moves with you and accentuates all your assets, you feel better and you perform better. I coached in the US and Canada in both ballroom and country western. I still actively teach a few lessons each week. And whether I help people dance or sew, I love teaching. Best of all about my Sew Like a Pro training series, it allows me to combine two of my strengths, communicating and sewing. I want to educate and inspire you to create your own magic, dress after dress after glorious dress. Whether you make dance or skate costumes for yourself or your child, whether you're an amateur sewer or an experienced one, we all face the same challenges. Our sports are expensive and so are the costumes. Over the last two decades, I've heard it time and time again from my clients. When they have a dress custom made for them, for their performance level, for their body shape and size, their confidence level soars, so they perform better. Most of my clients come back to me and say, why did I wait so long to get a dress made just for me? I feel so much better. It makes all the difference when I perform. But here's the rub. If you're a DIYer, you can make your own professional quality costume. Trust me, it is an amazing feeling to walk out onto the dance floor or float into the skating rink knowing that you look great because your costume fits well and accentuates all the right body parts. It's even better when you made the dress. So come on, let's get started with ways you can have a professionally fitting dress that doesn't require constant pushing and pulling to get the dress to stay where you want it to. But before we get to the actual client fitting, I encourage you to download and print off the top 10 tips for fitting success PDF. It's just below this video. I offer a sound, easy to follow 10 step system for doing your first fitting that works great on almost any leotard based dress. So print it off now so you can make notes or compare what I do in the video with what is on the handout. You'll also want to keep a copy near your sewing machine for later use. The tips I share on the handout and in the following peek into a live fitting are all based on a first fitting. Now I often do two to three fittings with my local clients and if I fit myself or I'm sending the dress off for a fitting, the leotard and the dress goes off and on the mannequin at least six times. Now while you're going to get some amazing easy to follow steps that you can implement on your next fitting, it's just the beginning. If you like this and want to know more, I'd love it if you joined me in the Sew Like a Pro school. Keep in mind that when creating a dress for yourself or others, there is very little modesty. There's no fibbing and no wishful thinking like, oh, I'm gonna lose 10 pounds or kilos, so I'll wait to make my dress. Make a kind, honest assessment of the body as it is right now in this moment, and it will always lead you to a better fitting, better looking dress. So come on, let's get started with the top 10 tips for fitting success and my personal fitting. Welcome, I'm Teresa Zygmunt, your host on this Sew Like a Pro journey, and I am so excited to have Faye with me. I told you before, she's my hero, 83, yes? 82, okay, don't, yeah, but nobody wants to get any age, so 82, but is she just not beautiful? I, she is so much fun. We, her daughter, she and her daughter drove up here and we have laughed like kind of over some really crazy stuff actually, <laughs> but we've had a great time and I want to walk you through what, just like I've done with all the other ones, what works and what doesn't work and then tell you what changes I made. Now, Faye is, I, I've told you before, there's no modesty and Faye has no problem with this because she's like, you know what, my skin sags now, we need to cover it. <laughs> or, you know, I really want mesh on my arms because it acts like pantyhose and it holds everything in so they look great. And I love that. It's just honesty and it always gives us a really great dress on her. So, you saw what this looked like on the dress form fitting, and I, like I said, the, you know, it never looks like it does on the real human. So, if I have Faye turned sideways, and just go ahead and relax your arms, please. When she's sideways, you'll notice that her spine curves more than the mannequin, and her chest, from like shoulder to apex, is a little shorter, going from here to here, 
than on the mannequin because the mannequin stands hyper straight. So if you compare, I'm you know the, the mannequin shape which is hyper straight to phase natural curvature, there's quite a bit of difference there. So what I've done is we'll go right back to the front, please, ma'am. Perfect. Is I have gone in and hiked all of this up. As Bette Midler says, we're keeping the girls high and dry. <laughs> That's in one of her songs. I love it. So what I did was I went in and just lifted everything up and tightened this uh, about an inch and a half, so about four centimeters. Now I did not do a pretty job up here, but what I've done is I've drawn lines so that I know where to fix this on the dress form because I don't necessarily want her to have to stand around long enough for me to fidget with all this, but we'll clean all that up on the dress form and I'll show you how to do it. I've gone ahead and taken in one side over here. I've not done the other side because I want you to see the difference. So everything I've marked has been over here. I've got a little bit here. Not as, you don't want to overtake in here because when you overtake, it tends to want to push the bust low and scoop out. So I want just enough that it doesn't gape like it is over here, but not so much that it makes it look hollow. And then on the side, I went ahead and took in just some at the armpits here, and it's gonna fade out just below, I'm sorry, just above the waist. I've also, this front line looks great. It's all sitting right on um, where she's got panties on. So if I have you turn profile again, please. Faye has a fairly flat rear end. And so she wears padded panties, which do a really good job. They give her about a half inch of curve. And, and they also give me a really specific line right here. So I've got white, I've got my chalk marts here. I am basically going to fold all of this up in there. I'm also gonna go ahead and do an extra dart here. I tried to um, preempt having to do this in the paper pattern and generally that works, but because the panties create such a specific line, I'm gonna to need to redart that. If you are not wearing fitted panties, then you will not need that dart. You should be good to go. I've also taken in, I'll have you turn a little bit more. Okay, good. I've taken in quite a bit on the zipper here. I would say that's a good, Oh geez, that's almost two inches down there. So almost five centimeters down at the very bottom. And then that fades out accordingly. Now this is, we're gonna go with phase ultimate honesty, which is the way to go when you're making a dress. This is not something you should be showing in your dress. Now this is all normal. We've got skin that shifts as we age. We have, I mean, phase really quite lean. Some people, this is at hers is skin. Some people, it's adipose tissue. It's fat. And either way, you want to cover that. So what we're going to do is cover this with mesh, but you could, of course, also use lycra. You would use a single layer, and that's going to keep all of this up. If, because she's got beautiful skin. I mean, there's nary a wrinkle back here. Beautiful skin, and she tanned for the occasion. I, that, I love it. Um, so, but even if she wanted to show off this much skin. If I were to come in and run a piece of elastic right here, it would create gush and it would eventually slide down and then the skin would still hang over or fat depending on what your body shape is. So that's one of the several reasons that Faye likes to do the mesh. Because you know, it's sheer, it's a little sexy, but yet she still gets to be covered up. So as I marked this side over here, oops, sorry. As I marked this side over here, I actually pulled this up to where I want it to be. So I have lines that go, and I, I did, I just put a tape measure on and drew that line all the way up to where I want it to go at the neck. Oh, you know what, we can just do this like a halter. Okay, so this will end up being mesh fabric back here, but it'll curve around and there you go. So this I will clean up on the dress form, but this is the line I wanted. I did not draw the line when it was down there because that's, you know, I would have all these wrinkles and I want to get rid of those wrinkles. Okay, so we'll rotate back again this way, please, ma'am. Okay, 
So that's what all that looks like. There's really not very much that gets trimmed off of the armpit, which is nice. It's, there's probably about an inch, so two and a half centimeters, but that's really not bad. You are so beautiful, Faye. Thank you so much for being here. And so we've given her bra cups instead of a bra because it's easier for her to get in and out of it by herself. We've given her padding with a push-up. And this is the same, pretty much the same bra and bra cup that we put in a prior dress so we know the shape. But if you're doing it for the first time, you'll want to, you know, just play around with bra bleh, play around with bra cups and see what you like. This width on her, because I mentioned on the mannequin that I thought this was going to be a bit wide. On her, it actually looks fine. It looks pretty natural. So she is, you know, naturally broad. Some women are, some women aren't. All in all, this is in really pretty good shape. Not pristine, obviously, because we had to take in some, but pretty darn good. The only other thing I want to do before I take it off, <coughs> excuse me, is I want you to look at how symmetrical Faye is, okay? Her shoulders are nice and beautiful and level. Her hips are really nice and level. And that is a rarity these days because so many people, they're, you know, they've got muscle imbalance um, and one, one shoulder's higher than the other or one hip is higher than the other. But because Faye is really very level, I can take the exact same thing in on one side as I do on the other side. And as a seamstress, that makes it a whole lot easier for me. If she had one hip, say, that curved out more than the other or one shoulder higher than the other, I would want to take in both sides individually. So just keep that in mind for, you know, your dress as you're fitting yourself or fitting your mannequin. Now, I'm going to take some safety pins, put them in here where her waist is because I want to know where her waist is when I put this back on the mannequin. And... How are you doing standing here? Oh, I'm fine. Okay, excellent. It's a good idea to always ask your clients to, you know, make sure that they don't need to move around because it is hard standing still. And I never liked it. <laughs> I've had clients who love it, but I never liked it. You do also want to go ahead and tell your clients to make sure they stand with soft knees. So you don't want to lock your legs, you know, just because it's, it's too easy to well, you're a nurse. <laughs> I have a lot of nurses. What are the odds of that? It like hinders blood flow or something like that if you stand with straight legs, something like that. Um, I don't know. But anyway, you want to have your client, or if you're doing the fitting on yourself, you'll be moving around a lot, so it doesn't matter. But if you are fitting a friend or a client, make sure they're comfortable. Make sure they don't need to take a break. And, um, and then also, once this is all solid, I will go in and have Faye move. So when it's got the leg elastic, once the mesh is on, I'll have her move and make sure that she can stretch and, and see how everything shifts. Because if it rides up over her rear end right now, not a big deal because there's no elastic. If it still rides up over her rear end once there's elastic, then there's a fitting issue that needs to be fixed. But that is pretty much it for right now. I'm going to do a little work probably and get right back to you. All right, we are back. Faye has a sleeve. <laughs> and so I want you to see the difference in these mesh sleeves. So over here, I'm gonna to try to hide back here. Over here, she's got natural tricep muscle hanging because it's a hanging muscle. There's skin, there's fat tissues. Over here, everything is nice and sleek, which is the really cool thing about having mesh. Now, Faye wants me to go in and tighten this up a little bit more so that we have more of a pantyhose feel, and that will just take the muscle and the skin and cinch it up a little bit more. And we'll, of course, I'll baste that and fit it on her next time. I only have one sleeve done because it's best to come in and only do cut out one sleeve for the first fitting. And that way, if the mesh is either too long or just the proportions are all off, it's not a big deal and you haven't wasted a lot of fabric. Overall, I'm really happy with the length, so I'm perfectly fine cutting that. The same for the next one. This will have mesh on it. I'm sorry, lace. It'll have black lace on it. You could, of course, do plain mesh on yours. I've taken it in some. Um, odds are good. I'm going to, once, 
If this is not all smoothed out by next time, we'll take a little bit more of that in. But this is really, really supportive. So let's talk about the support that mesh offers, or you could do this in a single layer of this lycra or any kind of accent fabric, really. If I go in and I reach my hand in, that's really about all I can pull. It is pretty darn snug in there. And that's the point, because it's holding up the dress. And when I pinned it on, I pulled it, I've got my shoulder markings right here on the mesh, I just pulled it down and pinned and pulled it down and pinned. And you'll get the details on that in the mesh program, which is in your bonus section, I'm pleased to say. Then, and I did all of that. So I didn't let the dress sag where it wants to go. I shifted it, go ahead and rotate please. I changed it so that it would go where I wanted it to go. Go ahead and keep going. Nicely done. So the dress wants to settle right here. And I didn't want it to do that, of course. So as I was pinning it, I pulled the dress all up where I wanted it to go. And then this is all nice and flat. Faye will have three petite little keyholes here, which I'll close up with bridal buttons or some kind of rhinestone button. It'll be very nice. But I want you to look at the difference in how smooth this is versus where the leotard wants to hit just by itself. This is not a great look for anyone of any age or size. So if you have really beautiful skin like Faye does and you want to show it, but you don't want the full coverage of mesh, I recommend coming in and maybe running two or three really pretty decorative straps, which would hold the leotard up and but still allow skin to show. I would also not put any elastic up here because you don't want the elastic to dig in and help create the gush. So I would finish this off with no elastic and then just do your decorative straps right here. And that way you could kind of have your cake and eat it too as far as skin showing but a really smooth look. I am Super pleased with this as a first fitting. We've got a lot accomplished. How do you like the support on your right side here? Oh, this feels really good. Excellent, yeah. good. And well, when she's got both sleeves in for next mm -hmm. fitting, then we'll be able to do some moving around or I'll have her move around for real and, and make sure everything doesn't need to be tighter or even a little bit looser. But for now, I think we are good to go. I, you know, Faye is just so wonderful. I thank her so much for being here. This is your first modeling venture, yes? It is, all right, you have been fantastic. <laughs> and so that is it. We will see you again another time. Thank you so much. Faye is so adorable. I have the best clients, I really do. I hope you enjoyed meeting her and learning how you can do a better leotard fitting. Don't forget to download the top 10 tips for fitting success to keep a copy handy for your next project. Now this leotard required few alterations because I make a super accurate pattern and because I pre-fitted the leotard on the dress form so Faye didn't have to stand around any longer than necessary. It's possible, maybe even likely, your first fitting will require more work because it doesn't fit as well. But don't worry, I created the PDF specifically as an easy to follow flow chart telling you what to check in an ideal sequence. You can do it. Click the link below so I can email it to you. If you enjoyed the last two videos as well as my blogs, you're going to love the Sew Like a Pro programs that walk you through step by step how to make your very own professional quality costumes. But whether you decide to join our sewing family or not, I still want you to make your own costumes. After all, sewing isn't nearly as common as it was 50 years ago. If we can keep it alive by creating our dance and skate costumes, we need to do so. Plus, there are a few fantastic perks. One, what will you do with all the thousands of dollars you save each year when you don't have to buy a professionally made costume? Two, Stop wasting time surfing the internet trying to find that perfect dress that looks and feels great, suits your fashion taste, and stays within your budget. It likely doesn't exist, so why not create it? Number three, let's face it, ripping stitches is a giant waste of time and a huge amount of frustration. It's no fun worrying about costume meltdowns because the trunks ride up and the shoulder elastics always fall off, or you don't have enough bust support. Learn professional sewing tips to increase efficiency and satisfaction. Four, 
Be proud of your work knowing it's well constructed, fashionable, and suits your body shape and size. Five, you'll need a bigger closet. I mean, after all, why spend all your money on one dress? Make your own and have as many as you want when you want. I love hearing your questions and about your sewing struggles because it helps me produce better products giving you exactly what you need. I'd love it if you told me all about your aha moments from this video or your costume meltdowns. Tell me please, are you a dancer or a skater? And which specific style do you do and how long have you been doing it? Have you made at least one costume before? Did you feel spectacular in it when it was finished? And if not, why not? And lastly, what is your biggest challenge with costuming, be it homemade or professionally made? And of course, if you found this video useful, help spread the word. Don't sew alone. <laughs> Share it with all of your dancing, skating, sewing friends. In a few days, I'll send the last video in this series showing you exactly what's in each Sew Like a Pro program. So after the next video where I answer your questions or concerns and show you all about the two programs that are available, you can register for the 11-week class right on the spot. That's all for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in a few days.